I say to to new people like uh, banging the youth when exclusive, you know, in they sing the song about scammer them there and thing and you know me I say to a new a new and a, a new youth with the boat like Christopher Martin, same mm -hmm. way. You know me I say Chris was supposed to do at least what ten years, eleven ten years in the business, because I think at 2009 him get that big birthday. And no, 2000, I think 2011 him get, him get, yeah, 2011 him get um, the song, um, Oh Lord, don't let me cheat on my girlfriend. You know, I actually called Chris, you know, when I heard that song for the first time, and I me say, yo, this song blew my heavens. You know me I say because I like your things yeah. where where people think outside of the box where me I say yo me should have come up with a vibe there you know me I say cause that vibe is so out of the box me like think about out of the box things them and when me hear out of the box song it's like it make me rate an artist different you know when you can tickle my brains that's why even cartel yeah. I rate cartel so much because cartel tickle my brains all the time you know me I say but um this rhythm. When, when we can unify so much artists, when you say a ZJ liquid with a combination with Egyptian and Cheek, or nobody not expecting that at all. You know what I say? Nobody not expecting that. You know, and then me and you and Green, nobody not expecting that either. You know what I say? For the people who never hear from you and Green in a minute, and then me and him come collab. And the song sound how it sound. You know me I say everything is just a blessing and is the Almighty. Because it's not we. We only are do things with the Almighty and manifest through we. Yes. You know me Absolutely. I say? Yes. How did you know what happened to make you know that, oh shit, this this is the right path. This is the right thing that I'm doing. Like Oh wait, I should go down this path. What what clicked or what happened for you that made you decide music and entertainment, producing, and all these different things that you're you're involved in was the right way to go? It, it's a love. It's not a lie. It's a love. And I genuinely love music. Cause let me tell you, I I'm a I'm a businessman as well, yeah? I have a business mind. I was born with a business mind. I just saw. When I left St. Catherine, I, I had five CXC subjects at the time. Ones and twos. Now, when I left, I gave myself a time period in which I needed to break. Because when I left school 92, then they asked me to come back because I used to play a money cup. So they asked me to come back and play one more year because I was still young, you know. So when I left school, I'm um, 93. I gave myself three years and I said, if I don't bust within this time period, me have to just go finish college and just get myself together. Cause I'm not really in a, this holy pop rock thing and popularizing thing. And you get me? So right. when I got through that. 4G. Just get the break. Like the exact mm -hmm. weekend, week where me get the break with 4G. Guess yeah. what happened to me? I received a confirmation that um Chaos at the time it named U Techno had uh, accept me to come. Mm -hmm. And I had a decision to make whether or not I would go that route our mother mo remember said first time you never have the opportunity to have internet where even if you're up on the road you can still study and you can still go to school via online and them things eh? yes so i had the decision to make whether or not listen am i going to push forward or with the music or me have to go don't go with the music or go with the thing so when when i decided that you know what me I do the music, you know, straight. I made a pledge to myself to deal with music like I was in a nine-to-five job. That if 20 years, 25 years down the line, my friends see, see me, 
that I used to attend school with, and God, they know what kind of mind I have. You know me I say? That me never in a position where my papa rise and, and them kind of thing there. You know me I say? So I, mm. I looked at it as a profession and not a hype. Because a lot of people into music know them hype. Them not into music business. You know me I say? And, and that's, why we, that's why we still having this problem of our legends that are our legends that have gone on to other realms or has passed on mm -hmm. where there's no money there or their royalties we don't know where they're going and so for me also being in the background of music contracts and things when i meet artists and i try to explain to them about contracts even branding and ambassadorship contracts they get upset at me and say oh no that's not how we do that we know him and him know me and we're going to just par and we're going to do the thing and everybody win. And I try to explain to them that there's paperwork. There's stuff that you need to do. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what we have a running joke in business entertainment. We say you can't do it the Jamaica way or you can't do it the music industry way um, or the entertainment way. And the Jamaica way needs to catch up to what's really happening. And so how do we bridge the gap? You know, you, you, you know what is a contributing factor to this, though, is that, unfortunately, a lot of the times, most of the persons entering music are those that are not educated somewhat. So when you cannot, like, pick up a, even a contract for yourself and read and dissect the contract, then you're going to feel like you shame to tell people, say, you can't read 100% or you can't understand what is written. And, and most of the times, remember, a youth are coming up and trying to get a break. He might not necessarily be in a position whereby he can contract a lawyer to go over it for him. You know what I say? But mm -hmm. I think the producers and certain labels mm -hmm. that give an artist a contract mm -hmm. where they know the contract don't go, they know says e that thing they might keep up, them need to stop it. Like I said to somebody, I don't want to call any name, but I said to somebody um, that because publishing is a tricky, tricky thing back in the day, yeah? And, you know, when you're young and somebody who you trust say, yo, come sign the publishing thing and you sign it. And then when you get older and you, and you read through your thing, them now, because whatever situation arise. And I said to the person, how could you have made me sign such a contract knowing that it is not good? And the person turned to me and said, everybody have to go through it. I said, no. What? Yes, that's what the person said. And I, I turned to the person and said, no, because me as an artist, me as a producer, me as a manager, I will not subject any artist to go down a path of destruction knowingly that that is the wrong path. That individual has to choose whether or not he or she is not going to take my advice about doing the right thing and go do something wrong. But I think that the culture and the habit of not just Jamaica, but in the Caribbean um, is that, and, and, and in America too, because we have a lot of independent artists that get a contract, they give them, you know, a million dollars and they say, we need you to produce um, three records for the next five years with, uh, it, you know, so, 80% contract, which means they end up like TLC. They get one cent or a half a cent per each album sold. And me, as a person trying to explain that to people, instead of just getting that million dollars, look at what's in your contract. Um, for example, there's a big record company that a lot of Jamaican artists were signed to. And a lot, I have Brenton that has spoke about it and said, I want to be independent. And people looked at them that they were crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. 
You see, unfortunately, Jamaican music especially, because I'm not going to tell you, say, American music is not subjected to it, but Jamaican music especially has been exploited in the worst way throughout the years. You know, they've been exploited and like, like, like I tell people, the difference between even Jamaica and international music is that when a company picks up an artist and you sign a proper contract and you get even one each song, the way the system is set in the States, the amount of money that you can make of just one each song, you can set yourself for the rest of your life. You know me, I say, you have to be full fool for end up with all 15 million in your account and blow up the whole light and do have nothing for sure. You know what I say? So I urge my fellow Jamaican artists, whether the older ones or the younger ones, because some of the older ones them still don't educate themselves on a lot of things. You know what I say? Be, be wary or careful of the kind of things them we assign. You know what I say? Get somebody to look it over a liar who understand because music law is different from other laws. Like, all right, you have one of the worst words in a, in a contract where somebody can put to give you. When them say perpetuate or perpetual. <laughs> that I'm laughing because you know, in law school, when you are doing jargon and people can't understand what they're saying, that's one of the words on the list that they tell you is a filler. Yep. You know me, I said, so, I mean, them have, to just take, them have to just take it as a business and do the right thing. Do the right thing. Don't sign to anything because of desperation. You know me, I said, because... Let me tell you something, you know, when somebody desperate in a position, they will try to do something at the time. But them things that will help them, where in the long run might hurt them. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. be careful. And the next thing, gratitude. I hate ungrateful people. Gratitude is a must, like we have to say. Because hear this now. I always tell people, you see, if you're in a position whereby you're in a desert and you're going to die from thirst and somebody comes to you with one teaspoon of water and that one teaspoon of water saves your life and you go on to becoming a millionaire so that you can own a whole heap of well. Do not be ungrateful to that person who gave you that one teaspoon of water. Because if it wasn't that one teaspoon of water, at that Much moment, that moment you would not be around to go on to success. Now, whether music or life on a whole, too much ungrateful people are around. But glad you said the word ungrateful now. It's Titiana. I really like that you're interacting with us. Um, I just want to read her comment really quick if you could scroll back down because she said she made a comment that was so true. She was saying that some of the artists that are older are illiterate. They cannot read. And they don't realize that the jargon in the contracts that they're signing affects them for like until they get like older and it's too late so i just wanted to share a comment because i thought it was important that we um tina decided to see a long time you know big up yourself pretty girl um so i just wanted to share that with you know mention that you um you have artists where you feel like sometimes i'm grateful if me of artists you know like what do you have an idea of when you say un like ungrateful, I tell you something. Using... My my my, you see me, me help a whole for youths, and a lot of them are ungrateful. Them bite off the hand till them start move towards your elbow. You know what I say? And and what me do in life, 
I don't take one man fat and fry our next. That's why I continue to help artists. Cause before me, but break. that's why you're always going to be blessed, though, Mr. G. That's why the door them always are going to open. Yeah, man. That's why I just continue to do what I do. Because I don't work for human beings. You know? I work for the Almighty. Because at the end of the day, God sees and knows everything. He knows your hearts. He knows your, your, your chain of thoughts. He knows everything. You Ever know blessed. And, and when I look up, my sign and everything, I was born to help. And I'd rather to be in a situation whereby I am a giver than a taker. Yes. And, and I think as a giver in where we are, or for those of us who I feel also the same way, when you're, when you're somebody that is a leader of having that capacity or somebody to open the door um, for many behind you, you end up having that feeling a lot because you get to see people that you have opened the door for feel like they can't shit on you and turn them back and like them not even know you. Um, I've been down that path. I feel like you open doors for people and people just are people, you know? They're just no people expectation or respect. People, people ungrateful. But guess mm -hmm. what? Not all of them. You have good and bad people. You have good and bad human beings. You know what I say? Um, the family up on the line now, Craig Cream is one yes, of the Yes, Craig. I'm the, trying to figure out a way how I can bring Craig on because Craig Cream said he want to answer for you. I want to know what Craig has to say. So I wish we can find a way to put Craig on and we all the on together. Send me a request, Craig, because I want to hear what you have to say. Um, well, yes, let man. Tell, let me tell you something about, about, about Craig as a human being. Because I'm me grow Craig, you know me I say? Big up in mother Audrey. I'm a second mother that. You know me I say? Um let me tell you, he's one of the most grateful human beings that. You know me I say? Full of gratitude and full of love. That's why God bless him as a human being a come up. And when him, Romar, a portion of the youth them were Go around a tree oaks and Sherlock and, and jungle, them see how me deal with them and deal with people. So when a man come up in a earth now, him goes a bam and no say, listen, I had an example. G was leading by example. So them follow trait and I do them thing and I help a whole heap of people to. Let me tell Craig, I said, Craig, you will forever be blessed because you remind me of myself in so many ways. You know me, I say, you're helping so much people at the same time. You know me, I say, we are burden bearers, you know. And we rather yeah. be burden bearers than to be the burdener. Yes. You know what I say? You have a freedom. I'll call it one day rhythm. I know you have the click click rhythm, which we just discussed. But tell me a little about the, the one day rhythm. Well, the one day rhythm um, came out on Sean Izzle's label, but I was um, one who had a lot of the influence in the person's voicing, songs voicing. So I helped Sean Izzle produce the rhythm, but it's Sean, Sean Izzle label and things. Sean, okay. Izzle, Sean Izzle is the one that built the rhythm. From the first time I hear the rhythm, you know, it says a monster rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know what I said? And it ended mm -hmm. up breaking him. It break um, cargo. It break liquid. And it revitalized and re-energized my career, Fambo career, and Beanie Man career at the time. Yes. You know what I said? So that rhythm... Notification. Up to now, up, up to now, that rhythm is one of the, the longest playing rhythms in dancehall. You know what I say? It 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 do its thing. It do its thing and it it stick. And out. it still is doing its thing. I think that there's no place in the world that you can play that rhythm and hear it and do be like, oh shit, like you're ready. No man, no for sure. That's why I said one of the longest playing rhythms in dancehall, because this year marks eleven years since One Day Rhythm came out and and. Every time I travel, me hear it everywhere. See me hear it in a, like, well, I, I, I hear 
what the songs I'm sure to hear every everywhere, swaggerific, Roman Red Bull. Me yes. hear them there in the white people them zone straight through. Yes. You know what I say? In a the in a the dance hall section, you will hear the rest of songs. Mm -hmm. You know what I say? But um swaggerific and Roman Red Bull definitely transition to urban America and so forth. So yes. you know what I say? That was that was a massive radio play all over the world, not just urban America. I mean, you could have been anywhere in the world and hear this rhythm. Yeah, man, definitely. As I say, one of the biggest and one of the, the longest playing rhythm. You know, me I say, give unto Caesar what is due. See, Fambo, they on the line. See, Big up yourself, to Jeff and Bizzle. Fambo can tell you, say, when he you see, Jeff and Bizzle, when you coming to talk to me? I need to have an interview with me so I'll have people um, inbox you, okay? So that we can talk. I would like to talk to you, Mr. Fam Bizzle. <laughs> I want to tell you, say, yeah, man. Say, say, Fam up on the line there. You yeah, see man. How, how Roman Red Bull came about, yeah? Fambo mm -hmm. is the one that came to the studio with the song. Yeah? And when he came, he was trying to do the punchline, but it never there reached the key properly. And Beanie Man was there, and I said to Beanie Man, demo the punchline for Fambo. And when me and Fambo outside at the voice booth and Beanie demo the punchline, I turned to Fambo and said to him, you know, so this has to be a combination, because the way Beanie sing this, you're not going to sing but the punchline the wicked Adam Beanie. You know, if you notice that song, though, have Beanie Man calling him name in it? Yeah, I never paid attention to it, you know. It never had Beanie Man name in it because the song was never meant for Beanie Man. I when Beanie no. come out of the, I when Beanie come out of the voice booth, me turn to Beanie and me say, Beanie is a combination. This in a car when me said to Fambo, this is a combination. Fambo said because him always a call me name, but you know, you see him right in the right chad, you know him right trad. <laughs> <laughs> you see me so hear him. Trad, you ask him. Me say, me not ask Beanie Man nothing. I tell me, I tell Beanie, say it's a combination. You understand? Mm -hmm. So, when Beanie come out of the voice booth, me just say, Beanie, it's a combination, this, you know. Beanie say, anything you up to, G, anything. You know me, I say, and, and make Fambo tell you, I said to Fambo right there and then, I said, Fambo, this song is going to start over your life. Your mm -hmm. life is going to fully start over. And that is exactly mm -hmm. what it did. You know me, I say? I think that that song is a song of um, the makeup of material for a lot of our, our summers. I'm um, drinking rum. Um, um, this song is part of a lot of summers and a lot of it plays and it clicks something in your mind and you remember that time. I think it's a timeless song. Yeah, man, it is. It is. It is. And let me tell you something. May I show you a life funny, yeah? I have a big up Fambo, you know, Warren. Because you see, the first time I see a man voice a song in a one take. No, second time. Because the first time I see a man voice a song in a one take, and me and Capitan, when we used to parody him, when he got voice tour, him voice tour in a one take. Whoosh, intro, go right down, kill the rhythm. Now, let me tell you what happened in 1994. Four, because certain things very memorable in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, 1994, I went to Penthouse, and it's not Penthouse, my record by now. I was recording for a brother named Courtney Cole from Roof International. Anyway, while I was at the studio, Courtney Cole is saying, Yo, me have the baddest little you that come vice. Yo, he might go mash up the place. That song me I go kill the place. Brrr, and, I, and I say, one bag of things. So everybody were there, they know. I said, which little you this in my talk? You know which little you it was? Future Troubles. So when Future Troubles come now, when the man going at the fight, because we there, they are waiting. Up. But the way Courtney excited for vice Future Troubles. The man, as him come, him get to go right in a device boat. Mm -hmm. When the man go in a device boat, the man goes so. Them start the rhythm and the man goes so. Higher! Higher, higher! Boom! This is one, yeah! You! 
and lick when song in a one go. See me here? See me as a little youth can never say me no go sitting. 